you know, first it was going to be like, oh, we're going to talk about the Black Panther, the second Black Panther trailer only. And I was like, you know what? There are a lot of stuff that came up, that came out, like, comic book-wise and things like that. And we can probably talk about those and stuff. So, um, so first up on deck, um, let's talk about Justice League real quick. So, did you see the trailer for that? Yes. Did I? Did I see the trailer for Justice League? Come I on mean, now. we got back from New York yeah. Comic Con that morning, so I mean, I was yes. I, like, I woke, I fell asleep, and then I woke up, and I was like, let me see this trailer for Justice League, and then boom. Dude, I didn't fall asleep, dude. When I came back, I did. I took a nap, but then I, I set my alarm, and I got up. I was up at eight thirty-five. Uh huh. Yeah, I had to watch that thing at nine. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't wake <laughs> up until like ten thirty-ish, and then I end up watching it and stuff. But um. Yeah, it definitely looks uh, interesting for the most part. Um, I'm still wary of of, of Cyborg. Um, I think everyone is at this point. Yeah, I, you know, Flash costume I'm still hazy on and stuff. But, um, you know, it, lo- it definitely looks a lot brighter and vibrant compared to the other ones. So we'll see. Um, like it was a little bit more Wonder Woman focused, essentially. So, you know. We'll, right. We'll see. I mean, what about you? What was your initial reaction to it? Um, I thought it was. I thought it's beautiful. I thought it. I thought when it opened, and what I kind of noticed in for that trailer was okay. So the first one, the very very first one, opened mm-hmm. with Batman. Yeah. The second one opened with Wonder Woman, and even though they haven't really brought Superman back, this one kind of opened with him. So I was like, okay, so they kind of like opened up with the Trinity. So this is kind of cool. And you are right. It is color different. And I'm guessing because, again, you know, if we watch the Wonder Woman trailers, the Suicide Squad trailers, every one of them had a different color or color gradient, you know, by the time the movie got released. And, well, maybe not. One, no. Yeah, the first Wonder Woman, uh, Wonder Woman trailer was kind of orange. Yeah. And this, the last one was really bright. And so I'm thinking... You know, uh, DC or Warner Brothers is like, okay, so this is how we're going to either, you know, by the time out, this is, so this is what we're going to finally go with. This is the color scheme we're going to finally go with. And I, I like that red because a lot of things seem to pop more. Um, you you have a feeling of on Flash's costume, but there's a shot in the trailer where I think where you see up close to him touching uh, Wonder Woman's sword. Yeah. And you just see the red in the trailer just pop up. And I was like, oh, this is beautiful. But it's, Again, Zack Snyder gives us visual emotions. Like you, if if for for all of his acclaim or for all of his, you know, for everything they say about him, is one thing you can count on Zack Snyder for doing is the visuals and the visuals for the tra- well. Again, this is just a trailer, but the visuals look good, except for maybe Cyborg. But what's to be expected from a full CGI yeah. character? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that I thought was pretty cool about it was also um, we saw a little bit more of uh, Aquaman in the underwater aspects yes, that they're using so yes. far. So yes. de- de- definitely that's, that is a huge deal. I, like I said, I'm curious to see how the movie, the Aquaman solo movie is going to show. And I know Justice League is going to give us a glimpse of how they're going to talk underwater. Because that's, that's always the biggest thing. Because you watch the cartoons and it just makes it seem as though talking underwater is just a normal thing. <laughs> you know? Right. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how yeah. that plays. Yeah, I do hope. I do hope we get some type. Yeah, you're right. Some type of talking on the water, because, oh, man, I don't know. I'm that's that's another thing that I'm kind of scared of because are they going to talk talk? Mouth going to open? Are we going to be distracted by air bubbles? Because that's something that has to happen if you talk on the water. Yeah. But you know what's what are you going to? How are you going to work around that? Is it going to be something where it's like psychic? You know, like oh, you know, yeah. But anyways, like besides that, the trailers the trailers look good. The trailer just looks so good. I can't. Yeah. I just don't know. I don't know what to say, man. I'm still I'm still curious about Steppenwolf because they showed you know a couple of scenes with him like he's very much kind of like CGI, kind of like uh, Ares was in uh, Wonder Woman. So I don't know. I'm curious and stuff. Like I said, visually it looks cool, looks menacing and stuff, but. I, it's, I'm always focused the, on how his interactions is with the league itself. Like you have this big CGI dude versus like a real person. How does that mesh? There is that one shot of him fighting uh, Wonder Woman. Yeah. And if you freeze it, you, you see him, you see his face and his face looks super cartoony. And what took me out of Wonder Woman for a minute was when she was fighting Ares and 
you know, it was like this dude with his mustache under, you know, under the helmet. And I was like, ah, oh, like, you're really taking me out of this because I can't see Aries being menacing with that mustache. Like, you know, so I, I hope um, Steppenwolf, you know, that was the only shot of him looking super cartoony. Like, when get because I feel like we need a close up of Steppenwolf. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And, we, you know, if we get one, it doesn't look that bad. Yeah, because it it did look very cartoonish to me. Like, no, nah. I, I I don't know. I don't know about you. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. We'll see how it, we'll see how it plays and stuff. Because like I said, I'm I'm curious to see where this all turns out ultimately. You know. So right. Um, next up, uh, Thor Ragnarok trailer. There was Which another one? one. There was another one that came out. I think it was a uh, very hella focused. Essentially. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Goddess of Death. Oh, yeah. you're the worst. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It looked interesting enough. Uh, there was another trailer that came up and stuff that had like new scenes and stuff, like you know, with um, that showed uh, what was it um, uh, Sertor and such. Yes. Which looked. Interesting. Did you notice? Did you notice that? Um, so in the very very first trailer. Mm-hmm. Um, the one that came out after that teaser, I think the one that came out for Comic Con. If you did you notice that when she grabbed his hammer, it's a different environment from that point to this point. Yeah. yeah. Like there's greenery in this one. In the last one it was like on the street somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, so um like I said, a lot of misdirection. That's what these Marvel movies do. Um Yeah, man. I like I said, I'm all in on what they're doing. I feel this movie, like I said, with Marvel trailers, they don't show you the full scope of the movie. Which I, I think hope, is fine. I hope that's what they're doing. Because I don't know any... I, I don't know what's going on. And it's just kind of baffling. Like, I can't tell what's going on. It's just like, what the hell? I mean, this is a good thing not to know. I mean, to be to be quite honest. I guess. I mean, we it's know like it's guess. Ragnarok. I mean, no, no, no. We know. Okay, okay. You're right. We know it's Ragnarok, and we know it's like the end of the world. But it just what we've seen doesn't look like they're fighting for the end of the world. It looks more like, yo, they're chilling. Like this is a normal Saturday for everyone. And I think that's the misdirection, though, because like I said, if you look at, I'll say Ant Man for example, we didn't get much of Ant Man other than oh yeah, that was that was a funny moment with the train and that's it. But we didn't know the build up leading up to it. Right. You know, right. so I think that's with Thor where they're just giving you these money shots, but I'm pretty sure there's way more stuff than what we see. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. You know, like because I said, I'll t- t- tell, t- tell you I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. Because at uh where it lost me was when he opened his mouth to say we're the Revengers and I was like, Yeah, I'm done. And that didn't, take, <laughs> that didn't honestly that didn't take me out of it. It really didn't it, take me out for me. It did for me. I was like, Yeah, no, like this is about to be like the funniest Marvel movie ever. This is going to be even funnier than Guardians of the Galaxy for me. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm good. Yeah. But, I mean, I'll see it. Yeah. Because comic book movies, it's, it's of course. Thor. But it's, I'll see it. Thor. Like I said, about another couple of weeks before it actually starts dropping and stuff. You know, early early screeners. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. I think we go see it a week after next. So, that's going to be fun. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. Um. So, Last Jedi, man. The, like haven't seen that you didn't see the trailer for it nope blackout because the reason the reason i'm doing a star wars blackout is because right. the um episode seven was this mm-hmm. yeah episode seven yeah to me when they showed finn with the lightsaber yeah and all the promo art had him with a lightsaber and i'm like oh my god we're gonna get this awesome now i and then when the movie came out it was him with the lightsaber for two seconds and i was like no no i'm not doing this again yeah i'm sorry so yeah. and, and Star Trek, unlike unlike Marvel movies, tend to actually tell you what's going on. Because in the trailer for The Force Awakens, I knew what was going on. But again, there was a little misdirect again with you know Finn. What I thought was his Force was the One Awakening. Didn't know it was Ray. But yeah, yeah. I said I'm just gonna black myself out of it. But if you want to talk about it, uh... I mute myself. Uh, no, 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 you don't have to beat yourself. I'll just say this. Um, it looks interesting. I feel much like the Force Awakens trailer. Again, it's one of those things where they're giving you money shots, but it's misdirection. 
like you said, fed okay. with the lightsaber. It's like, oh man, he could be a black Jedi and stuff. And like I said, don't get me wrong, we all got excited for it, and then it turned out he wasn't a Jedi. I wasn't necessarily mad. It was like, ah, oh well. You know. I was because you, we do have a black Jedi. It's not like we don't have one. Mace Windu. Yeah, true. Right. So yeah, it's not like we don't have a black Jedi. We have one. It's just they decided to do you know misdirect and. I was kind of upset, but it's it's whatever. I think it's a little. What I'm doing is a, it's a little, you know, petty and it's a little nitpicky. You know, I I, I rag on Anthony for being super nitpicky about Discovery, <laughs> and I'm doing the exact same thing. So, but yeah, nah. Yeah. I, I, I'll I don't know. I hope I hope they don't show it in Thor because then my blackout will be over and I'd have to talk about it. But yeah, no. <sighs> I'm <may> say <laughs> the blackout will be over and it'll be sweet. Yo, I'll be so mad. Oh man. Okay, so uh did did you see the trailer for New Mutants? Yes. And and I you remember you're we're in a group chat together. So yeah. you have a, you you felt you feel a way about it and this is this I'll is let you I go first. For us to talk. I I'll let you go first. Love it. Love it. And I'll tell you why. Okay. So you like Logan, right? Yeah. I have my problems with Logan, but I, you, you know, like Logan. Uh, you know, put it this way. Me and D gave it a three out of five. We enjoyed it enough, but we still cracked our jokes on the ridiculous stuff with that movie. You know, I thought Logan was yeah. You know what? You're right. I thought Logan was three out of five worthy. There were people giving it a ten out of ten. Like, no, it's, it's like no, it's not a ten out of ten, guys. It's, it's no. pump your brakes here, there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you like a lot of people like Logan because it's a superhero movie with uh with you know with an actual movie plot and then you throw in the superhero mix, right? Yeah. Same thing with um, Winter Soldier. It's a spy movie and then you throw in Captain America into it. Yeah. Um, Man of Steel is a sci-fi movie with Superman in it. So I like uh, genre-bending superhero movies. I, I tend to start moving into that direction. Even I didn't really like Logan like that. But I loved I loved what I saw from it. Like, because I feel like we should have had a horror X-Men story movie a long time ago like the phoenix saga could go into you, you could pull some horror element, elements into it but the whole demon bear story if you were ever going to tell that you couldn't do a well, pg-13 I mean, this is how you'd have to do it i mean if we're, keeping, again, it, if we're keeping it real though i mean being the x-men uh-huh. is already a fucking horror story any damn ways if you think about it it's like <laughs> you're, you're, a, you're, a, you're a mutant so you're gonna catch. yes so i mean yeah, okay, so here's my thing, right? Here's my thing about the movie. All right. I am fine with the concept of if you want to do New Mutants as a horror movie, that is fine. Right. Like you said, demon. It's the Demon Bear arc. It's 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 not as it's not this huge arc like people think it is. It's four issues. It's all it really fucking is. It's four. It's four issues. All right. <laughs> my thing is, if the Doctor in that trailer did not, if she didn't say anything involving mutants you would never know that was an x-men film and this that's very true that's, and that's very, a problem that i have because it's like look i'm not saying you have to be very overt with it but if there were if you Definitely. strip away if you strip away a marvel logo and her not saying mutants you would never know that was based off an of x-men franchise right and that's that's a fair criticism that's that's fair i'll give it to you but also if so you have that right yeah. but then Maybe, may, just maybe, Fox is trying to do this thing where, yes, we want to create this fringe universes because Fox is doing Legion, which is again a fringe universe. But it, we know the backstory, but then it's just so psych, you know, psychedelic and out of this world, crazy, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a fringe. It's a fringe thing. So that's 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 what uh, uh, I think. That's what Fox is going for. And yes, in un, in all honesty. If she didn't say that, you just thought this is a horror movie with kids with powers. But yeah, like a regular teenage adult, teenage horror yes. movie. It's like, all right. But if you, if you, I, I also think this trailer was kind of a teaser. Because all, all this teaser. trailer did it was is, show us the kids. It is a teaser. It didn't really trailer, go so. into anything. Yeah. And this is, this is a, that was a perfect tease. That's what you call a tease for a trailer. Yeah. And I mean, the thing of it is, that was my thing about. The trailer, it was like, all right, I, I see what they're doing. My, like I said, my mm-hmm. only hang up is that it's just the whole thing of you not really going full tilt with it. And I, I fear that 
And this is one of the things that annoys me with the X-Men movies. I feel that they get so much passes and stuff that it's ridiculous because <laughs> it's like, I look at Apocalypse, right? Yeah. And I feel Apocalypse did everything so horrible for the X-Men oh franchise. And there's a reason it's why that, and there's a reason why that movie didn't gross. I mean, it made money, but it wasn't a huge blockbuster. It was horrible, yeah. That it was and stuff. And it's just like, I feel, look, you know, it's the New Mutants. I'm pretty right. sure, and again, I know the director said, I don't want to put him in the costumes, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but, you, like, put him in the costumes. It ain't going to hurt you. It ain't going to hurt it. It ain't going to hurt it. But like I said, I, like I said, it's a teaser. I'll reserve judgment. I, 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 I'm for willing like to reserve judgment. I'm reserving judgment for a, full tw- for a full trailer. Okay. That's fair. You know, I, I, That's I, fair. I, 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 can't, I, can't. I, I will do that because it's like, I got my issues. I'm just gonna say, okay, let's 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 see this, see how this goes. You know, so yeah, I think I think New New Mutants is gonna come out hard as fuck. Like, I think it'd be so it'd be so different from not even every X Men movie. I think it'd be super different from every if New if New Mutants comes out and does very well with the horror genre. You can best believe that um, DC is going to, oh, Warner Brothers is going to be pushing um, their Dark Universe or their Justice League Dark movie even harder because they should have been done this. Yeah, I mean, and, and like I said, if it's a success, fine. It's just my, like I said, you know, it, it's it's going to be a success because if they build it like they're building Deadpool, you know, a, a universe unto itself, but still, you know, keep the elements of. You know, if, if Deadpool was a universe unto itself, but then you had Negasonic, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, and um, Colossus. Colossus. Probably one of the I best don't know her. Ne- Negasonic, Teenage. Probably the best incarnation of Colossus you're going to find in live action, honestly. <laughs> I mean, because Colossus hasn't really been done well. He's just been a guy. You, you finally get to see him be Colossus and actually fight. So, yes, I'm saying, if, if you know, so with those two people, now we get, you know, oh, so it is part of the X-Men universe. And then you have a uh, uh, Logan, which is a universe unto itself, literally, like you canceled every everyone else, but then you you bring <laughs> you bring Xavier into it, and so one one other person that kind of made it, you know, you have Xavier and um and you know you had the comics where they kind of break the fourth wall with it, mm-hmm. you so you know you, you you let people know okay this is still part of this, but it's it's by itself, so this can stand on its own, but it's still part of this. Yeah, yeah. And I think New Mutants is going to do the same where it's, oh, yeah, well, but, you know, the, the only other thing is, in terms of timeline, so we have, you know, the first three X-Men movies that almost now never happened, mm-hmm. so we're starting off with uh, First Class, Days of Future Past, Apocalypse, then we'll, we'll Phoenix Saga is coming up, right? So that's yeah, in line with yeah. the new line, yeah. and so is, is, is this, and what's the show... What's the new show that's going on right now? Uh, uh, the Gifted. Well, you got Gifted. Come on, help me out. The Gifted. So yeah, the is gifted. this and The Gifted in the same timeline? Uh, I don't know. That's the thing. That's the problem. It's like we don't know. That's the problem. It's like we don't have a like, general clue because they've just been freestyling with everything and it just everything is just its own thing at this point. It's its own entity. Yeah, but they, I mean, but if you, if you put things in perspective, there is a solid timeline because maybe, um, what's it called? Dark Phoenix would help, you know, tailor everything together and whatever comes next will let you see where people fall off and why the X-Men aren't a part of, you know, the bigger universe anymore. Because I think either the gifted is going to ask, answer that for us because it needs to, we, I do need an answer as to why, you know, in, in the gifted, the X-Men aren't like, I mean, I'm hearing rumblings that Magneto might pop up in uh, the gifted at some point. Ooh, ooh, so there's your answer. Oh, right there. Oh, 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 okay. There's your okay. answer. I mean, because right, that's, remember, that's Legion, it. That's all I, you, you remember Legion never shied away from the fact that you know, hey, he your, your dad is professor. Son. Yeah, your dad is, yeah. Xavier, is Professor Xavier, and you know, we got the Shadow King, so they never shied away from that. You know, yeah. So. But but they never they, they there hasn't been any talks of bringing him bringing him into it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's as far just as we know right they're now. talking about it. Yeah. Brian, so yeah. if 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 the gifted does it first, I I shoot. That'd be interesting. Shoot. Yeah, it definitely would be. Um, speaking of X Men, 
Gambit is finally happening, people. February 14th, 2019. <laughs> Valentine's Day yes! weekend. Cajun Hero. He, and Gore, <laughs> Gore Verbinski is directing the spinoff. That's yeah. my only problem with it, is oh, the director. Gore Verbinski, Other than Pirates of the Caribbean guy? Yes. Because, I mean, I mean, not just Pirates of the Caribbean. Didn't he do the um, Lone Ranger movie? Uh, try, did he? Let me look that up real quick. I bet, I mean, you, I, I bet I, you if Patrick say, was here, he would have found it. I mean, it. I want to say he did. I mean, if I had to really guess, I he did Pirates of Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. Yeah, he did do Lone Ranger. You're right. Oh, he did a cure for the well. He did. He did a cure for the wellness. It was an okay movie. He did uh, Rango. That was actually a funny movie. The Weatherman, <laughs> The Ring. Yeah, yeah, decent. He has a decent track record. It's just you know, Lone Ranger is the black. Lone guy. Ranger was just horrible. Yeah. yeah. But I'm just saying, his movie seemed more like a bigger scope type movie, like as opposed to say. Well, he did a cure for the wellness, and that wasn't really a, necessarily a huge like you know movie per se. Okay, so unless, right? Yeah. <laughs> unless you kind of like put Gambit into this, un- unless Fox gives you 30, 40 million dollars to do Gambit, which is dumb, which is not going to happen, they're going to give you gonna get a same, lot of money to do it. It's going to get the same budget as fucking Deadpool, basically. Deadpool won. Yes. Yeah. Which, well, is, which well, is what you need for Gambit. What? It's like you're. 80? You're, you're, which your 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 special effects is going to be mainly on Gambit's powers and. Just as a side note, so okay, so we got Belladonna. You got a uh, Ali Rodney playing Belladonna Boudreau. Uh huh. Um, and oh, they already started casting. Yeah, casting. Yeah, they already they already casting. Um, so you got her, Shoot. and then you got freaking um Devin said who who she's gonna be playing who who's gonna be playing her, but they got um what was it um uh the the uh the benefactress. Who is the Red Death, and wow. she is like you know she's one of the externals and stuff. Now, the thing of it is about her is that she was a person that was controlled. She controlled both the Thieves Guild and the Assassins Guild. These were kind of like a little side <clears throat> story for Gambit and stuff. So it's interesting that they're doing this. Apparently, I remember Mr. Sinister was like rumor for it, and yeah. that didn't really transpire and stuff. So it was like, oh, okay, so they're going with this one. All right, interesting. We'll see how this plays out, but. I don't know. Like I said, there was an episode of the X-Men animated series dealing with Gambit's past and stuff, so maybe they're going to go off that. Yes, that. I hope they go with that. Like, I, I like Gambit. I, in, in, the, uh, in the animated series, the yeah. 90s animated series, I loved, I loved it. So, I thought, I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. They also said, yeah, the rumors about uh, Daniel Craig playing Mr. Sinister. I mean, if he signs on, cool. I mean, Shoot. hopefully, he if he signs on, on, doesn't that make him more interesting? I mean, Mr. Sense is already interesting, but like I said, like, well, I mean, it is dependent on who you get as the actor to play him. So, yeah, right, right, yeah, that's possible. Yeah, that makes sense. So I'm, I'm, I'm here for Gambit. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm not it's, here for Gambit. I'm cautiously optimistic for Gambit. I'm here for Gambit. I'm, I'm, you see, if. If you made Deadpool work, you can make Gambit work. Like, yeah. you can, you can, because what I see Gambit doing is they're going, okay, you know what? You've wanted to make this movie, whatever, here's the money, go do it. I feel like they're not going to put in as much effort. The studio isn't going to put in as, put in as much effort as they would have a, a major X, ex- like Wolverine, how they, the studio meddled in the in the X-Men Origins, the studio meddled in the Wolverine, mm-hmm. so they changed the third act and you know, and then when they finally did Logan, like unless you're doing a major character, which again, Gambit isn't a major character. He was a major character in the animated series. Uh-huh. He was more yeah, he's not like, you know, I mean you've made how many X Men movies have you made? Six? You haven't had Gambit in any of them? Yeah. Yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, we'll see. Um Another news: Sony is still, still tempting. They still basically fucking with us, trying to make this Venom, <laughs> Venom, this Venom movie. Oh man! <laughs> um, yeah, they just cast Reed, Reed Scott into the movie and stuff. They don't know who he's. Doing. We don't know who he's going to play and stuff. I, I'm just mad that this is a thing. To be quite honest with you, I mean, why? 
I, is Venom by itself and maybe not having a connection to it's like okay I mean well, if you guys know Venom is a bad guy here just FYI I mean I, sh- I don't know what they're gonna do with it but you're right it's it's it, it is kind of weird to have Venom by himself without Spider Man but I I I, <laughs> I don't know I, I don't think I'm here for that one but I mean it's it's uh, what's his name Tom Hardy yeah uh, Reason Med. Like, come on! It's, it's they have some interesting character uh, uh, actors. Eh, it's interesting enough, but you know, it is, it is what it is. Um, so uh, let, let's let's get into this. Uh, Black Panther. Yes, Black I was Panther. waiting for this all night. <laughs> so, um, second trailer dropped. Uh, you know, basically what I see in the trailer is stuff that I saw at Hall, in Hall H and stuff. Yeah, whatever. A little, little bit of it in Hall H and stuff, but um. Yeah, man, this trailer definitely bought, 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 bought the fire to the table on this one. Got a lot of people oh, yeah. like just like the teaser trailer did, and um, they showed some new stuff. Um, you know, again, like I said before last time when we talked about this and stuff, and I said this a lot of times when it comes to anything combo related with Black Panther, it looks like, you know, hey, he, there's contention to the throne. Yes, yes. So you got a lot more of that in this one. Oh, yeah, Killmonger, thank God Cooler didn't use an African accent on him. He just spoke like a regular Michael B. Jordan. You know, with dude. Company. No, and that's what it is. He, you know. Okay, so I, you, you know how I feel about MBJ from yeah. the first time we did this. Yeah. I really would have wished that they would have tried. I hope they did try, and they saw it didn't work out. Maybe that's why. I, but I really hope if they, if it could have been possible, I, I feel like they could have done it. They should have done it. Yeah, I mean, because when I heard him speak, I was like, wait a minute, it just. Is that MB? It just sounds like Michael B. Jordan. Like, what? Less unassuming, I guess. I don't know. I, you know, I, <laughs> but um, so you got no. that. Um, you know, clearly, uh, also, um, Killmonger got a jaguar outfit, dog. Yo, that thing hit that let gold. Me, let me tell you something. Uh, Hall H lost their fucking minds when Dude, that happened, and I don't blame. I them lost my fucking mind. <laughs> And I'm glad. I'm kind of glad that I get to see it now, where I'm like, kind of like in a, you know, like I'm like, yo, because I don't know how I'd have acted in all Hall H with everyone like in that setting and just going crazy. I'm pretty much out to just shit myself. Like it, it was beautiful. Like I, what I, what I've said mostly is like a lot of these trailers. Well, this Black Panther trailer, maybe, maybe I'm fanboying hard. To me, is the best Marvel trailer that I've seen in the last three years. I mean, look, I man. might just be fanboying super hard, but I'm serious. Like, what what what's, what 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 would be the best Marvel trailer in the last three years? Uh, gotta be real about this. Um, probably say Civil War in terms of building up hype. I don't even remember Civil War trailer. I remember the Civil War trailer to the point of that that money shot of the airport of them going to fight about ready to sit there and clash. Oh, when they were running at each other. Yeah, they were running at each other, and then it ends with Spider Man. That was a pretty memorable trailer and stuff. Um, Oh, under roofs. I would probably yeah, I would probably say that, or um, I'd probably say Doctor Strange because that was that was the one that really like got people interested. Yes, 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 yeah. Because Doctor Strange was really trippy, and I was. When I saw Doctor Strange, I was like Inception, but I was like, "Oh, this is pretty cool because it's colors." So I was interested in it. But Black Panther kept really dark colors, and then it was either purple or blue, or when when it went to Killmonger, it was gold and you know yellow and red around him. Mm-hmm. Remember when when he went into that cave and he saw he's gonna burn the world down, and his yep. crazy tattoos on his chest? I'm like, "Oh uh, boy, this is amazing." I mean, shit. the visuals are beautiful. Oh yeah, yeah. I There's mean, a lot of CG in it, though. I mean, it's Wakanda. What the what? What do people want? I mean, it's, it's, no, no, no. Not even take Wakanda out of it. It looks like the Black Panther. Well, as it should be, is going to be do- moving a lot in CG. Like, you know, when you go away from that other suit that was kind of bulky to the skin tight suit, which was dope because his apparently, I guess, apparently his sister made the new suit. But yo, did you peep the still freeze transformation, Bruh. When he was running? Oh, yeah, yeah. Again, crowd at Comic-Con lost their goddamn minds on that. Dude, when he was running and he's like, and the suit is just like, 
click, 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 look, you know, bro, I, I lost my mind. And then when Killmonger just took the swords out, and the, you know what's, you know what's so dope about it? Because you saw that shot in the last the, trailer. Oh yeah, the teaser trailer. It was just he took the sword out, and then they all crowded. This and time they it was like, nah, fuck this, I'm transforming. Let's go. Boom! And I was, uh, I was like, get the fuck. That's so crazy. Yeah, man. I, man. They, 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 they can shut up and take my damn money because this shit. No, seriously. Uh, they already have my money. Like, Justice League. Look, Justice League has my money already. I'm going to go see that regardless because I can't wait to see how they bring Superman back. That's one. But this one has my money today. If this movie came out today, I would pick that to go see over Justice League. Yeah. I mean, I don't blame you whatsoever. <laughs> like,. And again, I might just be fanboying super hard, but this trailer kicks ass. Like it, Dude, claws it, fucking arm, <laughs> bro. T'Challa you know, crawl, okay. walking up the wall. Where, where do I start? Okay, so three three things that I was kind of worried about for uh, Black Panther. Like, so is it is this gonna be where they CG's arm a lot? You know, he's gonna his arm is gonna fall out and. Or roll, you know, like you know, it, it'd be something. But the, the the way they decided to do it was that they open his his fingers, his phalanges open up, the, the the weapon comes out, and I was like, yeah, okay, sold, sold. Next, yeah, like next. I'm like, at this point, I'm just waiting for like next. I'm just waiting for 2018. Like, I don't need to see any more trailers, movie. Now, yeah, they really on. don't. They do, like, honest, honestly, Marvel doesn't have to do anything between now and February. They really don't because no, it they is. don't because. Oh, go for you it. sold this movie to a bunch of people. Like I know there's a whole part of the world, uh, black people are just gonna see this off the strength of the first. The first word in the movie is black. Basically, you, bruh. The only the only nitpick I have, like I said, the two nitpicks that I had were Michael B. Jordan speaking, you know, like a regular American dude, and then <laughs> are we gonna get any? <laughs> hey. Don't judge me. Or are we gonna get any African like drums? Have any African beats? Like, you know, are, are they gonna actually attest to the fact that you know he is African? Like. Okay, the first trailer was dope with, you know, RTJ, and then you gave us another trailer with the hip-hop song, so I'm like, okay, so if you drop another trailer, you have to have drums and beats. If you're going to drop another trailer, if you don't, that's okay. That's okay. I mean... Don't drop it. Yeah, that, but, I mean, I'm just saying, for me personally, that's just what I, where I stand on that, but honestly, I am, again, if you don't drop another trailer today and just keep giving us posters, I'm in already like i don't care i don't want to see any posters i don't care to see any posters oh yeah that poster actually yeah. you know it's funny thing that poster actually is dope as hell it doesn't look photoshop it actually looks like a legit poster yes that was it doesn't my, look like the spider-man joint that was that was that was oh. always my thing with the last Marvel one and the posters is that they're very very supremely hit and miss more i forgot to be objective about this a little bit more misses than hits. This is true. This is true because the Spider-Man ones was all of them were misses except for the simpler ones were nice, but the 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 ones with Happy, all of them that was kind of a miss. Um, except for Thor though, Thor posters, bro, like the Ragnarok ones have actually been pretty good, better than Dark World, easily. <laughs> easily. Um, what are the posters like? Marvel posters aren't really memorable. It's usually just, you know, it's usually, it, you know, something like this or, like, I think a, I think their character posters are better than their actual main posters. Yeah, I mean, I like Age of Ultron, but I just thought the main movie full poster for Age of Ultron was a little bit whack. Yes, yes. You know, but. I mean, but then again, Marvel doesn't have to sell you with their posters. Word of mouth and just hype. Yes, and... Pretty much, like once you see that Marvel logo, you already start spending your money. So they they've reached the point where they can throw out whatever they feel like they want to throw out for posters. But I mean, who cares about Marvel posters? Like DC, Warner Brothers and DC needs all the marketing help they can get. You know, 
Yeah. To get you to go see the movies. I mean, at, at this point, you know, again, Wonder Woman, everyone, you know, most people who saw Wonder Woman, I think maybe half will go see Justice League because, oh, Wonder Woman is in it. But, you know, they still need these awesome Alex Ross inspired art posters and, uh-huh. you know, these awesome, like, you know, really blended color ones. Like, that's, they need all that. So they need to put all their, you know, marketing into posters and trailers. Marvel really doesn't. And the fact that this trailer, again, to me, has sold me, I feel like Marvel is trying to get people to be like, okay, like, we want to be serious about this movie. We need you to go see this movie. And so they're actually serious about this movie. Because it's funny, they're marketing it before Thor has come out. Well, they're not really marketing Black Panther. It's just, it's like that with any Marvel movie. Think about it like this. With Marvel, right? What was the first Marvel uh-huh. movie that came out this year? It was um, um, Guardians. Guardians, right? And then, like leading up into Guardians, there was some Spider Man. There was actually some Spider Man Homecoming stuff scattered sporadically. Yeah, it ways. wasn't. So you go into Guardians, but that's, and Guardians. Did but that's that big understandable, push. though. That's coming out in the summer. Yeah, but it also, but like I said, Guardians did their big push in the four weeks leading up to the movie. Boom, there. So I think with this one, it's a case of okay. We put this trailer out there to really get people hyped because it's almost near the end of the year. It's October, so it's coming to the end of the year. We just want to remind folks, hey, Black Panther exists. Okay, boom, trailer's out, done. They don't have to do anymore. So now they can focus on... Playing in the movie. Oh, they're playing in movies and stuff, don't get me wrong. But like I said, in terms of just where they're at right now, it just makes sense for them to do this. And then, like I said, they've been pushing Thor Ragnarok these past few weeks and stuff on TV spots. I've been seeing TV spots every single day. I've been hearing TV spots on the radio every single day. So they're doing their job. Maybe because I don't watch that much TV anymore. That's probably what it is. But they, they, they've been doing a lot of... <laughs> no. adver- they've been doing heavy advertising. It ain't just... It ain't... Yeah, trust me. Because, honestly, uh, from... Because Justice League dropped on Sunday. Every time you were watching... and Every football game that came on that Sunday it had the Justice League trailer in it. Yeah, it kind of shocked me too. And I haven't seen that with Thor. And again, like I just said, maybe it's because I'm not watching. Because again, if what I watch are my shows. I have my shows that I watch now, and that's about it. Because I have to do you know all the things that we're doing, you know, uh, you know, reviewing shows and stuff. So I can't really go into just watching like reckless TV just because. Yeah. But yeah like no, but this. So it kind of feels like the marketing hasn't been heavy for Thor for me, but because I think in the summer I was watching a lot of the, uh, a lot of TV, and you saw Spider Man everywhere. Yeah, yeah, it's like remember he was in, you remember he, you remember he was in the uh, he was in Starbucks at one point, mm-hmm. surprising people. Yeah. And I think that was around the NBA Finals, and Sony had put him, you know, put made made sure that Tony Stark appeared in the NBA Finals, uh-huh. and yeah, so there was a lot to do and. And the first Black Panther teaser came out during the finals. The Cavs won that game. So it's, it's uh, again, it just kind of They've been doing pretty good. But like I said, the shit's dope. Um, like I said, it looked like uh, the side note, like the beginning of the trailer has uh, M'Baku, literally the, um, the gorilla. Um, Yo, yeah, Man-Ape. Man-Ape and stuff. And, He's sitting on the throne course, and stuff. And I'm like, oh, shit, this, this shit about to get serious. You saw him pick up Daniel Kuyala. Like, so I, I One arm. He picked up. Yes, yeah, that was who we picked up. Yeah, so I think they're not gonna call him Man Ape. <laughs> no, they're just gonna use Mbaku and then call it. They ain't gonna say Man. <laughs> I, you know what? Again, I think I said this the last time. Like, I just wanted to see the world burn once someone said Man Ape one time, and let it let it have been. Um, Claude that said it. Uh, uh, yo, I think think pieces will come out super hard. <laughs> but but that's just me. I'm just a cynic. I want to see the world burn. But no, seriously, on a serious note, I'm here for it. I am so here for it. I yeah. want to just see it. Like I told you, I want to see today if it came out today. I would see tomorrow if it came out tomorrow. I'm just ready. Like, bro, like, can we get it? And what's what what I liked most about this was it did give us a plot though. <laughs> he's coming. It looks like everything in Black Panther comes from Civil War. So he's coming back home. Um, he's trying to be, you know, he's trying to take the steps to become the king. Uh, obviously, Killamonger is not having that because, again, this is why it would have been cool if they gave Killamonger the accent because Killamonger would have been home trying to hold, you know, hold the fort and 
then all of a sudden this dude just comes in. He's never really been home. He's never really tried to be one of us. And all of a sudden he comes in and, oh, it's your turn to take the tr- throne. But isn't that one of a, one of the story arcs where um, T'Challa never kind of really wanted it? It was thrusted it's not really, to him? It's not really not wanted it. I, I believe he wanted it. But like I said, he's always being challenged, you True. know, for the, for the throne. So. Oh, can we talk about the shot with this that kind of looked like the spirit world with the panthers in the tree? You said with the panthers in the tree, bro. When I say beautiful, like Kugler, I didn't think Kugler could give me beautiful beautiful shots like this. <laughs> I I I'm, I will come out right now and tell you I had my doubts, but Christ. <laughs> I mean, like I said, I like the transition. Put it this way: I was, I'm digging, I was digging, I'm digging the trans, the how should I say, the transition from like regular Africa, and then they go through this little, I guess, uh, holographic thing, and then bam, they're in Wakanda. Yo, almost Wonder Woman. Like it, it kind of puts the Wonder Woman um mist fog into shame because it just when you're going into that, it just Maybe it's because again it's synced right with the beat, so it was like, dude, I, I don't know, man. I'm just, I can't wait for the movie at this point. I'm like, okay, can when when do you want me to go see this movie? Do you want me to sleep outside of the theater? Because I will. It's like, I gotta do it right Come now. on, bro, <laughs> dude. I will go to if they told me this thing was happening in New York, I'd be in New York like ASAP. Like, what's up? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean. It is what it is. Like I said, I am curious. Like I said again, folks, um, Killmonger has kicked the shot out to T'Challa multiple times right, in the comics. Right. So this is this if he if this happens in the movie, do not be shocked, you know, at all, and be like, oh man, this is bullshit. How come you? I mean, he also looks bigger than him though. Like that too. MBJ really put in work. Yeah, I mean. That, it is what it is. That's why I'm, I keep telling people, I'm like, yo, this is a thing. You just gonna have to deal, you know. But yeah, man, this, this is this is gonna be ridiculously, ridiculously awesome, and I, I honestly, God, cannot wait. That is gonna be. No, I can't great. either. I can't um, either. I'm like, I asked for you, okay, comic book wise, right? Have you been read? Did you read the first issue of Marvel Legacy? The one shot, yeah, the one shot, the one shot. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Because I yes. gotta say, you know, okay. So as much as it's hard, as much as it's not hard to, to compare this whole thing with DC Rebirth, I think they're doing. I like how Marvel's doing this differently, um, just in the aspect of like, because I mean, because the thing about one shots is that they, they this is a thing that's been in comic books for years now. Has been the idea of doing mm-hmm. one shots to launch a bunch of titles. I think of yes, in, um, yes. I believe Age of Apocalypse did that mm-hmm. with the Alpha series, with the Alpha issue and stuff. You just got just jump off points for these new books and such. So what I like about it was just the idea of the uh, Stone Age Avengers. Oh, yeah, that was actually pretty cool. Yeah, uh, the That's fact that the, pretty cool. the fact that Odin existed back then and kind of formed what we got now. Yes, you know, and that was interesting. That the idea that we got a Ghost Rider on a woolly mammoth that that has to be the best visual <laughs> thing ever. Um, yeah, um, Starbrand, you know, Black Panther, just all these things and such, and then we get Robbie Reyes. Yes, versus Starbrand, dope as shit. You know, so it, it's it's interesting, and also just okay. So just the bet, we broke it down here. Okay, so we got Starbrand versus Robbie Ray's Ghost Rider. Then you got mm-hmm. Loki, who is basically embracing the aspect of him being part of the Frost Giants. Yes, and he's leading them. You know, and just this whole hey, you know, all these other things that's happening. Where you got Punisher, he's got the War Machine armor now. Kingpin's mayor okay. of New York City, you know, Loki is going to be apparently Loki's gonna be in position to be the next source of spring. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what's happening. Wolverine is back, he has an infinity stone, and I'm like, really? 
<laughs> and you know what's funny? It's it's you know you know what the, the funny thing about Wolverine coming back. I don't know if you experienced this, but you, you know how how fanboys are. Oh, yeah. we never got Wolverine. We never got Logan. Blah 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 blah. What, dudes? Are you okay? <laughs> he was he was it, it, with every iteration of Wolverine that we got. He never left. Um, let's see. Let's let's if you break it down, you know, Wolverine has <laughs> it's been, like four of them. It, 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 that's the thing. It's like you know, I didn't want Wolverine to come back, but I get it. You know, but at the same time, it's like uh, we already got a bunch of Wolverines. Like, why is he here? You know. Right, because we still have uh, you. You haven't rectified old man Logan. You still have um his daughter. You got his son from on X Men Blue, I believe. Yeah. Um There's one more missing. Doesn't he have another son with uh, uh that's in a Deadpool book? Supposedly. So it's like, nah, man. Like you can't. And, and they all. The funny part of it is they all act or have a little over. In them. Old man Logan is is pretty much Logan. It's just older. Yeah. L- Laura is pretty much Wolverine. She's just a girl. Yeah, that's all it is. His son in X Men Blue is just a younger version of Wolverine. I mean, confusing shit. Like literally, the first, the early versions of Wolverine was always confused. Didn't know what was going on. That's literally who his son is, and um. And X Men Blue, so I'm like, you fanboys are funny though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I mean, and and just so you got all that, and then you got, you know, let's see, let's see, Luke Cage apparently is gonna go back to jail. Don't know why. We'll see what happens. Of course, yeah, he's of black. Course. Of course. Is there any why? <laughs> eh, I mean, you know, it is what it is and stuff. Um, I really also too. Um, I really hope at some point uh, we get Danny and Doctor Strange teaming up because they had a very funny situation. They had a funny scene together. Uh, so we should get a team up. Wasn't it? Wasn't it when um was it Norman was trying to break into uh Bleecker Street? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, they they we need them. we need them to team up. Like, yeah, come yeah. on now. And also, uh, 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 Wakanda has a throne world apparently now. Really? Yeah, man. Uh, so okay, so in the Secret Wars, uh, when everything kind of reverts back in time and stuff, uh, Wakanda basically ended up venturing out into space. Wow. And. You know, at least for me, I kind of forgot about that actually being a thing that happened until mm-hmm. this this issue popped up, and we see the fact that apparently they managed to travel to space, and T'Challa and, and Wakanda has a throne world, and it looks dope as shit. Right. Um. And, 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 and yeah, man, this this is this is gonna be interesting going forward to see what they do with. Marvel Legacy, because I want them to like really go all in on this instead of just us presuming certain things. Um, the uh, Falcon, I heard the Falcon was really good last week. His, yeah, I need um, to read. I, I need to read that issue. Legacy book. I heard. I heard that that was really good. The one I am really, really looking forward to, or the storylines I'm really, really looking forward to, is Captain America. I just want to see what happens with Steve Rogers. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's basically Steve Rogers traveling around the world for revenge. <laughs> Sean Spicer tour. Yeah, I mean, that's all it really is. I mean, it's like, hey, I'm seeking forgiveness, guys. Don't you forgive me? <laughs> you know, that's that's all it really is. I, you know, it, it's you know, it's there. Um, so, hey, quick question though. So, um, shoot, metal. How is it? Oh man, it's it's. It changes everything you know about the DC universe, the multiverse. The because okay, so um, Fifty Two really explored the multiverse and kind of shut the door on Rebirth. But they instead of them bringing the multiverse back as its own self, they started by doing the dark multiverse first. 
Oh, wow. And by doing the dark multiverse, now you're, you're starting to open up certain things. So you ha- if you haven't read it, just know that there are certain characters that haven't been in um, DC for a while. Um, what's his name? Plastic Man. Um, yeah. uh, Detective Chimp was in Metal 3. Man, it's 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 really good. It's 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 surprising. And the best part about metal is is the book. The metal books are not as exci- pre- are okay. Ex- can, you, can you break? Down? What is the premise behind it? I really, okay. I'm still sure trying to wrap my head around this. All right. So since I think everything kind of most of the questions I've had have been answered on Metal Three, but when you start reading Metal, it's so confusing. You're right. You read the first two, you know, Dark Knights, The Forge, and Dark Dark Days, The Forge, and Dark Days, um, The Casting. Those don't help at all. Uh, <laughs> so don't don't even, like, bother if you think... I mean, you want to read them because there's little things from there that you can catch happening in Metal. But once Metal 1 starts, you, 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 you it tricks you because you think Batman is the key. Yeah. Metal 3 tells you Batman is not the key. Hmm. Yes, Batman is involved. He's the one who opens the gate to let darkness into our world, but the story doesn't revolve around Batman, bro. And yes, you know, most of the the nightmare, you know, Batman that come into the, the, the nightmare, the, yeah. most of the nightmare people that come into the world is all Batman related, you know, the Red Death. Mm-hmm. Um don't the best one, a uh, murder machine is the cyborg one. And then uh, the Dawnbreaker, that's the best one. Because imagine um, Hal Jordan's ring didn't go to Hal Jordan, but went to Batman instead, or Bruce Wayne instead. Wow. And it went to him at the scene of his parents' death. Because at the scene of his parents' death, yes, he was scared, but he overcame the fear that, that gripped him at the time. And he started chasing the dude who killed his parents. <laughs> and so the ring swoops in. That's I'm just giving the parents. The ring swoops in, and it's like, it comes to him, and it's like, Bruce Wayne, you just conquered fear. I am anointing you the, the Green Lantern. And he catch, he grabs onto the ring, he becomes the Green Lantern. And instead of, the, the, the thing is, instead of him being a hero, he ne- like, this Batman was never a hero at nope. any point. Not he at just, all. <laughs> not at all. You know, every, okay, so the, the Dawnbreak, I'm um, sorry, the Red Death, he was a hero, but he needed a flash power. Um, a Murder Machine, he was a hero, but you know, somehow Alfred got Alfred got killed, and he created a virtual Alfred who decided to protect Bruce Wayne. He'd have to encase him in, you know, and then change, you know, wipe wipe out his humanity and change, you know, just reprogram Bruce Wayne. So we're looking at a Bruce Wayne that's been reprogrammed, and so they've been they've been Batman and they've been heroes. This Batman was never a hero, so he yeah. he gets he gets the ring. He corrupts the ring because, you know, as a Green Lantern, you can't kill. Nah, can't. Yeah, the ring won't let you kill. He overcomes. He, he His willpower gets so high that he breaks the ring pretty much. And instead of him providing light, he takes light and covers everything in darkness. And that's where he kills you. So this that, was to me, was the best one. I, I think whatever's coming next is uh, the Drown. That's the Aquaman version of um, Aquaman version. And then in Dark Knight's Metal 3, we got to look into mm-hmm. the Doomsday version of Batman. There's a reason for that one being created. And I, I can't wait to read his um, tie-in book to this. Like, so to me, the tie-ins have been better. Um, the Gotham Resistance tie-in with, uh, that started with um, Teen Titans and then went to uh, Nightwing and then Suicide Squad and then Green Arrow. I read, I, the tie-ins have been better, in my opinion. The main story is just a very, it's, it's still a very, it's, it's, it looks, it feels like it's still developing, but the times have kept me interested. And so if you want to read Dark Knight's Metal and you, you resolve that you only want to read the time, uh, you only want to read the main stories, uh, you will probably fall out of it. Yeah. You, you want to actually pick the times up. Like this is uh, like Secret Empire. I didn't read any times because the main story was really interesting. Yeah, this was, one, yeah. huh? Yeah, that's what I was saying with Secret Empire. What I thought was dope is that they did the tie-ins. It was just basically optional. If you want to read it, that's fine. If you don't, well, you're not missing anything. Mm, no, not not with metal. Yeah, not with metal. 
because the uh, in, as opposed to Secret Empire, the only time that I think you had to really read was the uh, Captain America number twenty five. Mm-hmm. That standalone Captain America issue, yeah. But this one, you really want the times. I I think you the times make you more interested in the story itself because you're reading all these times and you're like, dang, now I gotta actually read metal when it drops, like <laughs> pretty much, like. Oh wait! I want to know if this is going to happen, and uh, because the all the Batman stories—the Batman, the Dawnbreaker, Batman, the Murder Machine, Batman, the Red Death—those are all one shots. Yep. Those are all one issues. So once those end, you want to know what ha- happens with those characters moving forward. You're definitely. You see, that's how they get yep. you. You're going to now go pick up the actual metal. But to me, I. I Ah uh, yeah. If if I wasn't reading it for the channel, I would actually wait till it's you know a volume. Or, you know a, a, you know till they volumize it, put it put it all together. Because to be honest, it's it's really taxing. Yeah, it's a lot. It's it's a lot because sometimes what like with the uh, Gotham Resistance, it would be Gotham Resistance, then the Red Death. Like I think with the first issue, it was three books that you needed came out in one week. Damn. I'm like, <laughs> like, I dropped, I dropped, um, uh, Suicide Squad, and I dropped, uh, Green Arrow. I've been dropped those, mm-hmm. and I've been dropped, and I've already dropped uh, Nightwing. But I had to read those three books. I had to pick those three up. I'm like, crap. Now I got to pick these three up. But and then I think in one of the Nightwing books that I probably never read, they, you know, they touched me because they, oh, it's so crazy. Everything leading up to this kind of was touching on it really, really lightly, and so. I'm just like crap now, but I'm not. Gonna, I'm definitely not gonna go back. On, I'm not gonna go back and pick yeah. anything up. But um, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, Batman and uh, Catwoman got married. Well, he proposed, but you know. They, yes. They, they uh, what's it called? Um, the War of Jokes and Riddles. Mm-hmm. That whole fucking storyline. Do, do you understand? Okay, I dropped Batman, but then everyone kept talking about the War of Jokes and Riddles, right? Uh huh. And I'm like, oh, man, I probably have to. So I went back and picked up from, I think the last Batman book I read was The Button. The end of The Button. Yeah. So I went and picked up from that all the way to the end of The War of Jokes and Riddles. For him to ask, you know, he asked her, I think, and then he decided to tell her the story of himself. Six fucking stories later, all because he just wanted to be like, look, I'm not the person you think I am. I was so pissed. (laughs) Don't get me wrong. It was a good read. It was a good read. But it was just really, it was, a, you did all of this just to ask her to marry you again. Like, come on. But she said yes. And I was excited. So, I just like the I, I just like the idea of this Joker and Riddler going nuts. Oh, going at it. Yeah. And I was, I mean, because, again, if, if it wasn't because of him trying to tell Catwoman about his feelings, or if it wasn't because of that, if it was just a story on its own, I think, to me, it would have felt better. It's just like. So this whole thing was because of this. That's how I looked at it. But it was a pretty good read. Don't get me wrong. Pretty good read is just the payoff at the end. Didn't I didn't justify the payoff? Didn't justify the whole you know the story. Yeah. Yeah. So um. Yeah. Definitely. I gotta play catch up with some comics as well and stuff. But even um, e- sorry. I'm sorry. Even more. I'm sorry. Let me just say one more thing. Oh, you even good. more about the payoff. The payoff again. There's two things about this. The, the story of War of Jokes and Riddles is. The payoff for one is for Batman finding out that he can get pushed to a point. Yep. Because at the end of the day, the Joker saved him. Yes, he did. So that's one. And then, oh, I am reading The White Knight, Batman The White Knight, where this is a Elseworld alternate story. You heard about this one? Uh, nah, I haven't. Yeah, okay, so t- t- technically the joke, just think of Batman has crossed the line so many times and no one has been able to stop him, but somehow um, Gordon, you know, like, the Joker gets himself together and is like, you know what? Batman is is a scourge. Like, he's just as bad as the criminals putting away, and now the whole city's starting to look at Batman as a criminal. Oh, man, I've seen, cl- I've seen um, um, images of the issue pop up on the timeline. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's a pretty interesting... Look, look on things. I, I kind of want to see where it's going to go because I, I in the, at the end of the day, I still feel like the Joker is still going to be the Joker. Mm-hmm. That the, the city Gotham will need Batman again. But the way it's going, it's looking like 
Batman is a bad guy, Joker is a good guy. Which I like. Very weird. Because Batman <laughs> because Batman has always been No, but if you look at it, Batman is, is a bad guy, but you know, he's Batman, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But um Yeah, that was our quick little combo corner on certain things that popped up in the news and such and uh yeah, hopefully next time around we're actually going to be talking full-blown tilt in the comments. Cause I'll be done. <laughs> Dio will be done catching up and stuff. So, yeah, it'll definitely be Shoot. a worthwhile talk and stuff. But um, just want to thank Shoot, you. If you, need, if you need me on here to do a comic book show with you guys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll count you in. Um, so uh, you want to tell the folks where they can find you at, sir? Shoot. Uh, I feel like they should know this by now. But if you don't yeah, know, you know it's, it's Earth 2 Comic Cast on YouTube. as Earth with the number 2 comic and cast. Uh, on YouTube. Also, you can find our podcasts on Audio Mac. We do uh, we do three podcasts that we do this week in comics. Um, we do a Discovery Show podcast that we do on um, on YouTube. But you know, if you're one of the people that want to download the audio and listen to it like on your run or while you're at work or something, well, that's on there for you. And on Audio Mac, lets you download the audio so you can carry that with you at any point. Yep. Yeah. So. Those are our two mediums right now. Always on social media, Earth 2 Comic Cast, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Pictures from Comic-Con are going up there. Interviews from Comic-Con are going to be start to go up soon, I promise. Soon -ish. Not really sure about <laughs> Earth 2's schedule yet, but they're going to start going up. Um, but, yeah, check out, uh, check out our Instagram. We dropped a whole ton of pictures from Comic-Con, so that should be interesting. Yeah, cool. So, with that said, we will catch you guys later. Peace out. Peace.